In this video, we're gonna be talking about everything that you need to know about the new FHSA account. More importantly, we're gonna be answering the question, is this the right account for you? So what is the FHSA? Well, the FHSA stands for the First Home Savings Account, launched in April, 2023. This is a new registered account. We'll talk about that a little bit more later, specifically designed to help Canadians save for their first home purchase. Important to note, of course, that although the name does imply savings account, similar to the tax-free savings account, the TFSA, this account is so much more than just simply a savings account. This is an investment account where you can go out and purchase stocks, bonds, ETFs, other investments with the goal of actually growing your money rather than just parking it away. Now, I wanna start off with a basic question who can open an FHSA? Well, in order to be eligible to open an FHSA, you must be 18 years or older. In some provinces, such as BC, New Brunswick, and a variety of others, you must be 19. This is known as the age of majority. You must be 71 years or younger. You cannot open this account if you are too old, and you must be a resident of Canada. And importantly, of course, you must qualify as a first time home buyer. Now, what exactly does this mean? Well, this means you cannot have owned and lived in a home in the current year or any of the previous four calendar years. Now, there is some nuance to this. For instance, if you bought a home strictly as a rental property, if you have a home that you have not occupied and lived in as your primary residence for the past five years, you may still qualify as a first time home buyer. In fact, up on the screen, I'll pop up a couple scenarios or examples that I can share directly from the CRA website. Feel free to pause these and have a read. I'm not gonna go through them, but you're probably gonna wanna double check where you stand. I feel like if you're in this situation, for the vast majority of people, you'll know where you stand. We're looking for people 18, Canadian resident, and a first time home buyer. Now, before we talk about the amazing benefits of the FHSA, I wanna first talk about contribution limits. Because as with our other registered accounts here in Canada, registered meaning that it is registered with the CRA to essentially provide us with these awesome tax benefits. Well, there are limits. We cannot just pour as much money as we want into these accounts. Otherwise, people would. With the FHSA, you can contribute up to $8,000 per year. There is a lifetime maximum contribution limit of $40,000. What this means is that if you open your FHSA today and you max it out every year, you'd hit that $40,000 cap in five years. Now, a question you may be wondering, if you don't hit that annual limit, what happens to that unused space? Well, that contribution room would carry forward into the next year. Now, important, important, important to note here, this carry forward of unused contribution space, this only starts to accrue once you've opened your FHSA, okay? This is critical. And don't get this mistake you know, mixed up with the TFSA, where essentially once you turn 18 or 19, you automatically begin accruing space. You don't have to do anything, right? You literally, you know, if you haven't opened a TFSA and you're old enough, you will have been earning space, so to speak. With the FHSA, you only start earning that space once you open the account. So a good action item here for you is that by the end of this video, and after maybe doing some more research, if you deem that you want to participate in the FHSA, you want to open an account, and of course you qualify qualify, go open it and start accruing space. In fact, I guess a little timely tip here is that I'm filming this in July slash August. We're kind of in the second you know, part of the year. If you open that FHSA now, you're going to get that $8,000 worth of space. And when the calendar year turns over, so in a number of months, you're going to get that additional 8K worth of space. Now let's move on to talking about the benefits of the FHSA. What are the benefits? Well, there's a lot of benefits in my opinion. And if you're familiar with either the TFSA or the RRSP, two very popular accounts here in Canada, in my opinion, the FHSA kind of collides and clashes the best of both worlds. Starting with benefit number one, this is of course a tax sheltered account. What does that mean, a tax sheltered account? Well, what that means is that anything that you earn with inside the TFSA, whether that is capital gains, so you buy a stock or ETF or an investment that goes up in price and you sell it a capital gain, whether that be dividends, so the investment pays you a form of uh, passive income or income, whether it's interest from a bond, it really doesn't matter. Anything that you earn within the account is sheltered from tax. Think of it kind of like a little bubble account. This is of course a major benefit because had you been investing outside of a tax sheltered plan or account, well, you would be liable uh, to pay tax on those various forms of income. You pay less tax, that's more money in your pocket, that's more money for your investments to compound. Number two, here's the big one of course, it's the tax deduction that you get on your contributions. And this is just like the RRSP, if you're familiar with that. Essentially, the money that you contribute into your FHSA, that amount can be deducted against your income, AKA you pay less taxes. Now I have an example here with some math that we can briefly run through this. Let's 
assume you earn $80,000 in income. You will pay taxes on that $80,000. This is what we could consider your taxable income. Obviously, the exact amount is gonna vary depending on where you live. However, let's just say for the sake of this video, you're paying roughly 25%. Um, let's just say, because it's nice round numbers. But that means that in a given year, you're paying roughly $20,000 in tax. Well, if you had contributed 8K to your FHSA, you can deduct that 8K or whatever amount you contribute against your income. So essentially in this case, you're being taxed on $72,000 rather than the 80. If we take that same math of 25% of 70,000, that's $18,000. That is a $2,000 difference that you'd be getting back on your tax refund or your tax return because how things work here in Canada is essentially throughout the year, your tax is automatically deducted, um, you know, every paycheck. They take a little bit, little bit, little bit, and they're basing it off of that original 80K, you know, taxable income. Of course, when you factor in that contribution that you are now deducting against your income, well, you actually owe less taxes and the amount that you've paid, they're gonna reimburse that or essentially refund it when it's time for you to file your taxes. Now, a couple quick notes on this. You can choose to use that deduction in the year that you make the contribution, or you can use it in a future year, okay? So a quick tip on this, where exactly would this apply? Maybe you're in a scenario where for whatever reason, you foresee that in the next year, you're going to have a higher income. Maybe it's a salary increase, or you're up for a bonus, or whatever the case is. You just anticipate that next year, you're gonna be in a maybe higher bracket or earning a higher income, well, in theory, you could make the contribution this year and choose to offset next year's income where you're essentially getting more bang for your buck. Another important note, you cannot use the deduction to offset a previous year. So this is unlike the RSP, which you may be used to, there's a really kind of unique 60 day buffer period where you can actually make your contribution in the new year and then use it to offset the previous year with the FHSA, that does not apply. And technically, once you start making qualified withdrawals, so dipping into your FHSA to put toward that first home purchase, you can no longer use the deductions in following years to offset future, future gains. These deductions are essentially meant to be used before you start utilizing and tapping into this money. And that segues very well into point number three, which is of course the tax-free withdrawals. And this is very much like the TFSA, characteristics of the sheltered account and the tax-free withdrawal where you pay no money when you withdraw from this account. Key point being, it must be considered a qualified withdrawal. Up on the screen, for this to be considered a qualified withdrawal, all of the following must be met. You must be a first time home buyer for the purpose of making a withdrawal. We kind of already talked about this. You did not live in a qualifying home or owned or jointly owned in the time in the previous year or previous four calendar years. Again, we've already talked about that. You must have a written agreement to buy or build a qualifying home. You must not have acquired the qualifying home more than 30 days before making the withdrawal. You must be a resident of Canada. You must occupy or intend to occupy the qualifying home as your principal place of residence within one year after buying or building it. And you must have filled out form RC725. And I'll include this down below if you're interested. Long story short, in order to meet that uh, requirements and make that tax withdrawal, you have to be putting the money towards the legit purchase of your first home. Now that leads into a very interesting next question, which is of course, what if you don't end up buying a home? Well, what happens in this scenario is that if you don't end up buying a home, you can roll that money over and essentially transfer it into your RRSP. You can also do it to your RIF, uh, Registered Retirement Income Fund, tax-free. Let me point out here, this does not impact or affect your contribution room. This is additional RRSP space, if you will. So a possible tip or consideration here, knowing that, is that if you qualify for opening an FHSA, open it, tap into that registered tax sheltered space, get the tax breaks with the tax deductions, use it knowing very well that in the future, if you don't end up buying a home, you can roll that in tax-free to your RSP and essentially get new space. To me, that would be a very strong consideration. One more quick tip here is that if you find yourself in this situation, please do a direct transfer, okay? So from institution to institution, if you plan to roll over your FHSA into one of your other accounts, transfer that account. And that is very different, and I believe a very common mistake that's made across a lot of different Canadian investors, withdrawing that money. So literally, you know, liquidating the account, withdrawing it, and then recontributing into your RSP, that would not be a good situation because that would certainly be a taxable event. There would be all sorts of consequences where you're making essentially a withdrawal, non-qualified withdrawal, and then putting it into your RSP as a contribution, 
we don't wanna do that. We wanna do a direct transfer if that applies to you. Last technical point to cover off here, I think worth mentioning when to close an FHSA or how long can you keep the FHSA open? Well, the maximum participation period stated here is 15 years after opening the FHSA, either that or before you turn the age 71, uh, or of course, when you start to pull money out and uh, put towards your first home, making a qualified withdrawal. In conclusion, I am personally a big fan of the FHSA account. I personally don't qualify for this account because I've already purchased my first home and I live there. But if I didn't, I would be taking full advantage of it for the tax sheltered nature of this account, for the tax deductions to help me save money on taxes. And number three, as just discussed, with the flexibility of possibly not buying a home and just being able to roll that into my RRSP, to me, um, it's a, it's a win-win and it'd be a no-brainer actually, in my opinion. I remember a couple years ago when this account got announced, there was some you know polarizing thoughts on the FHSA and whether it was useless, whether it was gonna help the you know housing affordability here in Canada, which I don't think it will, um, people complaining about the, the contribution limits amounts. I think as investors, we should be pretty happy with this and we should aim to utilize this account. You know, we take what we can get and more registered room that is hard to argue with in my opinion. If you guys enjoyed today's video, all I would ask is you don't even have to like the video. You don't even have to subscribe. Well, you could do both of those, but um, I'd encourage you to download our free app called Blossom. I really think you'd enjoy it if you're into topics like this or learning about investing and finance. We're building a social network specifically for investors and the DIY investor. We have over 150,000 users. Uh, if you have any questions, it's a very welcoming community and a very cool place to learn more uh, for anybody who's passionate about finance. There's a QR code up on the screen you can scan or simply go to the app store and search Blossom Social. It's completely free to download. Let me know what you guys think of the FHSA. Do you plan to use it? Was there anything that I missed in my video here? Leave a comment down below. But as always, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.